Are you there? Is everyone settled down now? Everyone comfortable? Right, we'll, we'll actually begin the talk now. Let's get, get me a seat now. I'm sure you don't want to look at my midriff, huh? My goodness. Right. As long as you're all comfortable and so on. Very, very good. Sorry, what's that person doing over there? The one in the middle, in the middle of the sofa. He's got a, an iPad thing out. What's he doing? Can you please have a look what's on the iPad, what he's looking at? Sorry? Football. Football. I don't, I don't, I don't care. Sorry? I don't care if to the World Cup. I haven't, I'm not interested. Can you please ask that person to leave? This is not FIFA. It's a, a it's a fourth way, not FIFA. FIFA, 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 FIFA. One thing that amazes me about this work is we are told constantly in almost everything we read the purpose, the aim, is to is to become, is to be. And to be is to be different. And I've been involved in this work for 30 years. I'm sure you're sick of hearing that. I'm sick of saying it. Uh, and I've only come across two people in those 30 years who were truly different. And I'm going to share with you something I've read today. And it's from volume three of the commentaries by Maurice Nicole. And it's about impressions. The third food, the incoming impression, and what we actually gain from a full digestion of the third food, the impression. But as I say, it, it amazes me that we, we are told that to be is to be different. And I've been to a couple of groups and so on and spoke with people about the work and so on. And they're like cardboard cutouts of one another. I'm sure that Gurdjieff would, would give them a kick up the jacksy. Very, very hard. So bear that in mind, to be is to be different. And when I was saying to a friend the other evening, when you're like really, really different, uh, the people can see you generally per se as being a little bit crazy and so on, but it's not. It's a total and absolute opposite. It's allowing oneself to be unrestrained and to be true to one's inner essence. And that involves being different. And someone sent me uh, a request, a lady here in London, and you know who you are. And she said, will you please read some of uh, Be 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 Belzy Bub's tales? And tales, it was a written message. <coughs> and tales was spelled T A I L S. <coughs> cough, cough, splutter, splutter. Have another cigar now. Uh, Bel Belzebubs, Belzebubs, tales. You know who you are. Wink, wink, wink. And I will read some. I read there's a section in the middle of Belzebub's tales called America. And talk about being different, my goodness, uh, the writing in there is completely, I've read since I was a child, and there's just absolutely nothing like it. It's just mind-blowing what is contained within, within that chapter, America. And I'm going to read it out to you one evening soon. It's very, very beautiful here. It's very, very peaceful and enchanted and magical. The Christmas tree, as you know, is, is over there by the mantelpiece and there's flashing furry lights uh, in the background there and candles and things. And the table is bestrewn with different candles. And this one is a scented one. Someone sent it to me. You're not supposed to look at your face with a candle up against it because you look about 150, apparently. Well, I do. And it's uh, ambrosia or something. It's really, really beautiful. Amber, I should say. Uh, so let's get cracking. Uh, this is from volume three of the commentaries and it's entitled The Food of Impressions. And even I just spoke about uh, Gurdjieff's Beelzebub's Tales and how incredibly truly is. This is also 
and something obviously rubbed off on Nicole from Gurdjieff uh, and that rubbing off rub 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 is now continuing to this very very day so let me begin the reading now it's dated uh, I've got my big fat head in the way of the light and it went dark so move back a little bit now uh, it's dated Great Amwell House which is a place in England where Nicole worked for a number of years and the date is April 10, 1943. The food of impressions. Work idea. The work teaches us that the human machine takes in three foods. One, ordinary food. Two, air. And three, impressions. From these three foods, the machine produces different energies for different centers to enable the machine to work. A man can therefore be ill from lack of any one of these three foods. Without ordinary food, he can live for perhaps a few weeks, three weeks. Without the food of air, he can perhaps live for a few minutes. And the work says that without some food of impressions, a man cannot live a moment. Commentary. And, and the, the, the term man is used in reference to both men and women, obviously, uh, as opposed to saying he, she, it, they, or whatever. Uh, commentary. We will speak only of the food of impressions, both when waking and sleeping. In the ordinary sense, a man is getting impressions. When asleep in bed, for example, Many impressions come from his body, from being hot or cold, from pain or comfort, from the muscles subserving breathing, from the heart beating, and so on. If all impressions could be cut off, the man would die at once. Now let us take a man or woman in love who has not heard from the beloved. Suppose they begin to pine, to waste away, and to become ill. Let us suppose that they are taken to hospital. The doctors prescribe more nourishing food and drink, or they recommend a change of air, and so on. Yet the poor patient remains certainly ill, weak, and wretched. Port wine every hour is no good. Then suddenly a telegram arrives. The beloved is still alive and is coming tomorrow. Do you think that suddenly this woman or this man becomes quite different? Of course they do. And what is the reason? What is this strange food that has made the change so rapidly? This strange food is the food of impressions. How was this food administered? by the telegram, by the wonderful news. Now, long ago, when I and a few others were fighting for the recognition of the psychological factor in medicine, I sometimes used an illustration of the above kind, but it was met very heavily by the doctors of those days. I have little doubt that they would have liked to have, have a bit of paper on which the marvellous words were written and to weigh this bit of paper, and to measure it, and to analyse its chemical components, so as to find, uh, to, so, so as to find cause for the transformation in the patient. I am sure that some of them, by sending similar telegrams to patients not in love, and getting no results, would, would say, obviously, that the telegram was of no value whatsoever. Well, that was the state of darkness in those first two decades of the century, when the battle for the psychological factor in illness was being waged. And then came shell shock, and actually eminent medical men searched in the blood for some unusual platelet or some foreign body to account for a man breaking down who had been in the trenches for months 
and who had been in, in the trenches for months and months under uh, heavy shelling, sniping and mortar bombs. Yes, this psychological factor was not recognised directly. Now, if your food of impressions is nothing but daily horrors, then it will be very bad food and it will make you ill. Just as bad air or bad food without vitamins will make you ill, give you scurvy and so on. I often think that the whole range of physical illnesses due to lack of vitamins, such as scurvy, can be represented on the mental plane by a correspondence. A narrow, prejudiced, mean person, a jealous person, a negative person, for example, will take in negative impressions and so will be ill on that level, whereas a person more generous and broad-minded will not. We pay for every wrong attitude, for everything we do not forgive, for everything we lie to ourselves about, for every negative state. That's worth repeating. We pay for every wrong attitude, for everything we do not forgive, for everything we lie to ourselves about, for every negative state. We will speak now about noticing, observing the effect of impressions, about what the work term food of impressions means practically. Take yourself, you, you sitting there on the sofa. You hear that the, you hear that the horse you have backed has won. This is nice news. Or you hear that it has lost. This is not so nice news. Now, the, the news that the horse has won or lost is one example of food of impressions. Yet people occasionally say to me that they do not understand what food of impressions means. They understand ordinary food and drink. They are rather dubious when one speaks of air being a food. How can it be, Doctor? Why, you cannot even see, see it. Someone actually once said this to me. But they regard impressions being a food as sheer nonsense. Now, suppose you are asked to, to dine with someone and you feel hungry. The first course is, let us say, a real mixed grill, properly cooked. But the fashionable cellar you are dining in is warmed by an anthracite stove that leaks. So you get a headache. That is, the food of air is bad. Well, you, you struggle along. Then the person you are dining with says to you, your dress does not suit you, and you actually look awful. Now, in such a case, the actual food, 768, is excellent. The food of air, 192, is tainted with carbon monoxide and is therefore poisonous. And finally, the food of impressions, namely, you look awful, is not exactly very good, is it? I fear you will not enjoy the evening. I think a badly cooked meal in good air and surrounded by charming companions would be infinitely preferable. Yes, but we do not notice this at all. We are blind to it. There is a proverb, better a dinner of herbs where love is than a stall-fed ox and hatred therewith. What is the secret? Better to eat a scanty meal with good food of impressions than a feast uh, with very, very bad impressions. So these impressions that we are constantly receiving, the third food, are obviously the most important ones of all. As Nicole has just said here, uh, the food can be great, uh, the air quality can be very, very good wherever one is, but the third food is of vital importance because it impacts the first two. Uh, and in the first part of the paper, he spoke about 
uh, someone going to hospital and being very, very unwell and then receiving some really, really great news and then the person is utterly transformed, i.e. by the un incoming impression of that food. Uh, I will continue to read. What is the open secret? Better to eat a scanty meal with good food of impressions than a feast with negative emotions. Now in taking, now in, taking in impressions, it is necessary later on in the work to realise that all impressions are in a sense internal, even when we see another person outside of us. Let us suppose a man sees his beloved with her arms full of roses, advancing towards him across a, a sunlit lawn. He gains very strong impressions. His heart expands or contracts or whatever it does. Consider for a moment the sight of his beloved is an impression entering by rays of light into his eye as an image. This image, as in a camera, falls upside down on his sensitive camera plate or retina. So, his beloved is upside down. Then her upside down image is received by about 7 million light sensitive nerve points which combine and send up through a million separate nerves this darling image to the brain. On the way, this beloved image, first upside down, then split into a million separate nerve impulses, is divided in such a way that one bit of the left brain at the back of the head receives one half of her and the right brain the other half, speaking very roughly, and each stimulates further millions of cells. When all the complex apparatus which relates us to the beloved and to the roses is grasped a little, we realise that the external world of objects seen is the result of internal nerve machinery. Yet it seems so close, so embraceable, but it is really very distant and therefore it is impossible to get into that immediate contact with which we all desire and expect. But if you begin to understand your beloved, and she you, through learning a common language such as the work, you are far, far closer. We are far closer to one another psychologically than we are physically. Really, is it not laughable that the, the nice man in the act of proposing is proposing to a nice woman who is actually upside down and vice versa. A marvellous clever affair is all one can say, but it makes one reflect on the ancient idea that in some way this outer world is a sort of illusion. At, the, at this present time, people are not necessarily only affected adversely by limited quantities of ordinary food, he was writing during uh, World War II and rationing, but also by lack of the right food of impressions. Dullness, drabness, monotony, mean, mean lack of impressions. You must understand then that a person may be sick because of a lack of that most important food of all, the food of impressions. Consider then the difference between a drab world of uniformity and a colourful world of differences. Which do you think will give you more food of impressions? Which world will be psychologically the right one? It will certainly not be the right one if everything is re reduced to a common level so that no differences exist. A man does not get rich impressions from sameness but from difference. A man does not get rich impressions from sameness but from difference we're back to what i said at the beginning to be is to be different and it's when we have a glimpse of something that is uniquely different and very very special and very on a completely different level that we get an enormous good uh, impression coming into us uh, not but as, as nico says here not by sameness but by, by, by difference I almost kicked the table over.
and it's full of candles, so then there would be a fire, like a great uh, conflagration, which I don't really want. Uh, this this is the final section from this 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 section of Nicole's. This brings us to the question of the reception of impressions. How do we receive impressions from outside? Or rather, on what do these impressions fall? They fall on associations. As a consequence, life tends to have the same effect day after day. The impressions, of course, are never just the same. It is our reception of them that is the same. Gurdjieff once said, try to see things without associations. Now, if we could see things without associations, we would be transported into a world of marvels. Impressions would fall on essence. Gurdjieff was once, once asked, what happens when impressions fall on essence? He replied, everything becomes more vivid. Now, as we are, impressions fall on a machinery of associations which distributes the impressions to different centers i.e emotional intellectual and it does this mechanically that is impressions produce a mechanical habitual effect and do not gain the vividness that they should so we have to change our associations and this begins by realizing briefly speaking everything the work teaches us to realize by means of self-observation and non-identifying. For example, the dawning realisation that one is mechanical weakens associations based on the view that one is fully conscious. Seeing things from the work point of view alters mechanical associations. This in turn increases the reception of the food of impressions. If we continue to think in the old way, we will not be able to loosen mechanical associations. You cannot reach a new feeling of yourself if you persist in your old thinking. So the Gospels teach that metanoia, that is change of mind or new thinking, is the starting point for change of oneself. I'm thinking now of that uh, very, very famous quote from uh, Romans chapter 12 verse 2 and it is a work quote uh, be not conformed to the world uh, but be renewed by the transforming of your mind metanoia is the Greek for transformation of the mind associations are part of us but we do not notice them they act before we can see them acting but with experience and self-observation, we can notice both the incoming impression and the association it is about to set going, and eventually we can prevent it from doing so. This is a very good stage to reach in the work of inestimable value. Amongst other things, it enables one to see practically and not to think theoretically, that the outer world only reaches us through, as it were, a mass of distorting lenses and that we do not really see one another, only our ideas of people or our associations with them with which we are identified. That is why when people do not behave as we expect, we are upset. They do not correspond to the associations which we have of them and ourselves. This is one reason why people put each other in prison. It is necessary to let go to loosen these associations. It's absolutely astounding and uh, utterly breathtaking. An impression is coming in and it's falling on a mechanical part of a center within us and it's just like that. And as Nicole says there, we don't see other people. And I spoke to a work colleague months ago and he said, Gurdjieff would, would say on a regular basis, I don't think, I see. And this work colleague said to me, when you actually really see, there is a vividness and a reality which one wasn't in contact with before. 
the whole process changes of consciousness because we are habitually, as it said in the talk, uh, going through the motions day in, day out. Uh, and we need to get to our essence, which actually truly sees things. And with regards not seeing other people, uh, both Uspensky and Nico would talk together about the invisibility of people, that people are really invisible. And they're not there in totality in this particular moment of realness and the digestion of the impression. This work is absolutely stupendous and it cannot be described in words how stupendous it actually is. And I've only read a few passages from uh, Nicole's work over the last few weeks and it's as we know it's in four volumes and an index and there is there's so much in there and more and I adore it and whilst doing this work over the last one year I've I've actually reached a place within myself which is very very peaceful and very very happy regardless of external events and the talk before that one the Food of Impressions is about psychic energy uh, within different parts, within our emotional and in our intellectual and in the moving part in the body and how this psychic energy actually operates. And it's, it's connected to something which is referred to as a large accumulator and there's two smaller ones attached to the emotional, the intellectual and the moving centre from which energy is taken from the larger accumulator. And the most strongest force we have is the psychic one. And if the energy is drained from the emotional center, we can't respond emotionally, we become dead. And being aware that the psychic energy is what revitalizes oneself and one's life and conserving that energy and not squandering it on mechanical responses to, to things from outside and you become very, very happy, regardless of what is going on externally. I'm going to, in my next talk, I'm going to read the uh, section on psychic energy, because it's very, very important for people who are serious about doing this work and people I'm directly working with. Uh, it's, it's actually a major point that psychic energy is just, just goes unconsciously on, on things that it shouldn't go on uh, and it needs to be conserved so we can actually develop and be at peace and make progress and it's done through the psychic energy within the three parts I've just mentioned emotional intellectual and the moving center seems as though I've, I've, I've actually entered a, a magical dom domain, which is fine by me. Uh, Morris Nicole from Kelso in Scotland. Any questions, insults? whatever just leave in the comment section to be is to be different and it's not different in a sense of feigning it it's actually being it in your essence as nicole says this this talk if you sort of slice it down into different sections is absolutely astounding uh, sameness doesn't produce a heightened emotional state or an awareness of actually that one is alive it's just habitual and it's just the same and at some point we have to if we are serious about work upon ourselves and for the sake of the work we have to completely come away from uh, influence a life the media I'm referring to in all these different guises and when I sometimes finish these talks I'm doing work on my channel uh, things will just flash up on YouTube and, and so on uh, and it's just so mindless it, it defies description 
and it's like 99.9% .9 of the stuff that's on there. Uh, this work is for anyone coming into it for the first time. It's like going through a portal into a really, really, truly magical enchanted land where love is real, where truth exists and where magic exists. It's really, really utterly astounding. To be or not to be, that is the question. Let me toodle off now and uh, attend to various other things. I'm putting no more decorations up because it'll be like uh, Santa's grotto otherwise. Lots of love to you and thank you very much for watching. Uh, the work is now ongoing and it's going up and 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 getting higher and higher. Happy Christmas and for the lady who asked for the Belzy Bub, Belzy Belzy Bub tales, I will do that next and I will act all the characters and there's a character in the American section, an American businessman who is in love with dollars. Gurdjieff calls it the land of dollars. People are in love with dollars. And this gentleman's name is Mr. Bellybutton. Mr. Bellybutton. Lots of love. Take it easy now. Do the work. Have a look. If you haven't looked at, for, at them for a while, have a look at these commentaries by Nicole. Uh, because just by reading them, your being changes. How do I tell this off now? Bye for now, folks. Bye.